So this case is about a 34-year-old paternity secret. We hope we can bring some resolution today. Mr. Cooper, your mother recently came clean that the man you believe to be your dad is not your biological father and the defendant is. Ms. Cooper, you say you held the secret for just too long and you felt your son deserved to know that Mr. Newby is his father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Newby, you were stunned by the news that you may be the father to a child you had never met and you're in court today to defend your belief that you are not his dad. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Cooper, what happened two months ago that started all of this? I get a call about 3 o'clock in the morning. My mama called and told me that uh, the person she told me was my daddy and my father, that this gentleman was, and to go online and look him up. And this is what your mother tells you? Yes. What are you thinking? All kind of things. I mean, she was like, don't be mad at her or whatever. A lot of things ran through my mind. Like what? I thought it was a joke, actually, honestly. I thought she was playing. Really? Yeah. Because that was so far outside of your realm of thinking. Yeah. And so, Ms. Cooper, what made you make that call at 3 a.m.? I mean, this has been building up in me, Yana, for a while. I mean, it's not like the first time either I tried to get in touch with Mr. Newby. I just had no way to get in touch with Mr. Newby. Mm -hmm. And... It's it just been weighing on, on my heart and my mind. And it's something I thought my son deserved to know. So, at 3 in the morning, you just said, this is it. Yes, yes, Your Honor. You kept the secret yes. for 34 years. Yes, Your Honor. When you made the call, did you think your son would be able to receive the news or you just felt like you couldn't hold it anymore? I mean, I really didn't know how Dante was going to take it. But it was something I had to get off of my chest. I had to let him know. Why keep a secret for 34 years? I was very young, a teenager, when this all happened. And, like, me and Mr. Newby, we were very good friends back then. If I told my parents that Mr. Newby was Dante's dad, then I thought, being a kid, that we wouldn't be able to be friends anymore or play it together anymore. It's like I didn't want to get Mr. Newby in trouble. So I held this secret to myself. Not telling anybody. Never. So when you found out you were pregnant, who did you tell? And that's, that's another thing, Your Honor. I didn't know I was pregnant. I never... I, I didn't know I was pregnant until I was five months pregnant. I didn't know what pregnancy was. And then I had a teenage friend that was pregnant at, also at the time. And she was kind of the one that told me that I, that she thought I might be pregnant, too. Wow, so you're so young that when you become pregnant, you don't even know. Yes, sure. Because you don't know any... You don't experience the changes in your body. You don't even know what's going on. And it was another friend of yours that was also a teen that says, I think you're pregnant, too. Yes, sure. And she was pregnant. So who did you tell? Well, at that time that I was pregnant, just her. Just her? Yes. Did you tell her that you believe Mr. Newby was the father of your child? No, Your Honor. How did your parents ever find out? It was time to go back to school. And over the summer, I gained, had gained weight. And my mom was buying school clothes, and she was like, that's not right. I mean, I've always been a small person, and now I don't get went two sizes up. And she was like, this is not right. I mean, and she asked me questions, like, was I messing with little boys and everything? And I told her no, I mean. But she figured out that, you know, I was pregnant, too. And so when she said, were you messing with little boys, you said no, it comes out. What happens the day she finds out you're really pregnant? In my eighth month, she took me to the doctor, and when I had my exam, and he took, came back and he told my mom, yes, ma'am, she's pregnant, and she's very, very pregnant. Wow. And you didn't go to the doctor, and your parents didn't know until you were eight months pregnant? Yes, Your Honor. At that time, I'm sure she asked you who the father was, it was another, like, childhood friend that I went to a dance with, and she just knew me and Mr. Newby to be just as friends, but this other guy I went to the dance with, she just assumed that he was the father, and that's what... She said it, and that's what it was. She said it, and you did not contradict her, or you never mentioned Mr. Newby? No, Your Honor. And that goes back to 
you saying that you were afraid that if you said Mr. Newby's name, you all would be separated. You would not be allowed to see him anymore. And this other man, the one that your mother basically said, this is the, the father. Mm-hmm. This is the man that your son Dante, Mr. Cooper, believes is his biological father. Yes. Mr. Newby? Yes, Your Honor. Take me back to the day you found out that you potentially could be Mr. Cooper, Dante's father. What happened that day? I got a message on Messenger, because I was friends on, with her on Facebook. And I got my messenger popped up and they looked on there and they said, you're not gonna believe this, this is your child, real talk, and with a picture of Dante on it. And I said, what? And then I text her back and she didn't say nothing. And I said, you can't drop a bombshell on me like that and don't elaborate. And I waited until she finally responded. And then I said, does he know this? I said, because how could I be the father? I never seen you pregnant. So you never knew she was pregnant? I never seen her pregnant. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. So, you never saw her pregnant? No, Your Honor. How is it, she said when she went back to school, she had gained two sizes. You weren't in school when... We didn't, we we didn't participate at the same school. You didn't go to the same school? No, well, we only seen each other after school, summer times. We moved to, uh, Fort Hood, Texas. And that's the last. I'd never seen her until that message. And so you had not seen her, heard anything about Dante, Mr. Cooper, your whole life? Not one Until word. you get this message on Facebook? Yes, ma'am. Wow. Yes, Your Honor. You submitted that message to the court. This message says, you know what I gotta tell you some real life. This is your son. That's the first time I heard anything <laughs> about this in 34 years. Wow. What did you do at that point that you got the message? I was just stunned, so I kept asking her questions. I asked her, does he know about this? How could I be the father? I mean, I've never seen her pregnant. We all was kids. We all was messing with each other and all that kind of stuff back in the day. My family member was involved. There was another girl involved and all of that kind of stuff. So when I found out, I thought it could be him also. Wait, I want to understand this. So you're saying... All of you all were young teens experimenting with sex. Yes, Your Honor. Unprotected, because at that time, we didn't have as much talk about safe sex and stuff like that. So you're saying that there was also a sexual relationship between Miss Cooper and another family member of yours? I don't recall that, though, Your Honor, but okay, if... I mean, I don't remember that. So, Mr. Newby, you still feel in disbelief at this point. You see pictures of Mr. Cooper. Are you now curious? What do you do at this point? I mean, this is news 34 years later. I showed my family members exactly that right there and asked them what did they think. And what did they say? Everybody said he looks like you. (laughs) It's interesting. You all both have that toothpick sitting out the side (laughs) of your mouth. That's what I'm laughing at. Well, it's... It, well, it, I say that because my father does that, too, with the toothpick, and it just goes down the line. It's amazing, but, you know, a lot of men do that. But it, it, when you look at that picture, that's what makes you laugh, the way you're holding that toothpick. Yeah. Mr. Cooper, did you have a relationship with the other man? Nah. That you believed was your biological father all these years? No, Your Honor. You didn't have a relationship with him? No. How did that affect you growing up? I mean, it played its part, you know. I got off the porch a little early, you know what I'm saying? So when you say you got off the porch a little early, I think that means when you are a kid, you're supposed to stay on the porch, that's where you're supposed to be safe, you're not out in the streets. So meaning you got off the porch and you said you were in the streets a little early. Yeah. Did you get in trouble as a kid? Yes. A whole bunch of it. And, Ms. Cooper, when you watched your son getting into this trouble, are you thinking in your mind at that time if he had known his father? When Dante got about 10, it was, like, trouble with school and stuff. And that's, like, the first time I... I, If I could have found Mr. Newby, I would have found him. I I thought, like, maybe if I found him, it might... He might... It might could help Dante out a little bit. But Dante always had my father, too, and my father is a good father. 
My a father and man. mother are still married. A great and man. They're st he's still in my life. So you had your grandfather. Yes, he had a good role model. But you still say there were moments when you'd look at your son and you'd say, I wish I could find Mr. Newby. Yes. And let's be clear, back then when Mr. Cooper was 10 years old, there was no Facebook. No, it wasn't. So these ways that we can so readily find right. people now, you had none of that. No. You didn't even have cell phone back then. And then uh, sometimes I felt like it was okay. We don't, we did it this long, we, um, we did it. But he had, a, he had my father, he had my brother. But you know? he didn't have me. If I yeah, and daddy, I understand that, too. Him. Yes, that I understand. And I can see that this hurts you, sir. Now it do. I feel like I stole something from you and Dante. That's why it weighed so heavy, and I couldn't hold it any longer. <sighs> it's a lot to process, isn't it, Mr. Newby? Ooh, you never get to know what a great man my, my father was, it's kind of hit me a little. It's all right. I mean, I Not think... A little more than it, than it was hitting me. It's hitting me a little bit more because I think back on how, how my father raised me and how he treated my grandkids and stuff like that. And he, got, he missed out on all of that stuff. And so now it's like hit me. I'm just thinking about how my dad would have loved him and how he... Oh, I would love my dad. That's just, and now it's kind of hurt real bad. No, I when understand. I think, when I think about it. Mr. Cooper, when you hear Mr. Newby talk about the things he feels like you missed, what do you feel? I really don't know how to feel about the situation. I mean, I feel his pain. You know, me being a father, you know what I'm saying? I can relate to the Miss House situation. But I mean, not having a father, so it really don't, you know, I don't deal with this 34 years. Something I want to know, you know, for the sake of my kids, you know, and, you know, start from right now and move forward. And so, Ms. Cooper, <laughs> I think we need to talk about the fact that at your age when this happened, we were growing up in a time where a young girl in your position there was a lot of shame attached to that. Yes, it was. And back then, it was about shame and secrecy. That's how most people handled it. And so, as a young girl, when you don't even know enough to know that you're pregnant, when your mother says the story that this little boy is the father, I do understand how a young girl would not be strong enough to say, well, no, mommy, it's not. It's really someone else. And I think we need to acknowledge that because we can't look at this situation under today's lens. Once Mr. Newby said he moved away to a whole different state, it's probably difficult to even find him if you wanted to. Yes. All right. Mr. Newby, you brought a witness and I'd like to hear from her. Please stand, ma'am. State your name for the court. Lindsay Robinson. Ms. Robinson, you are Mr. Newby's... Oldest daughter. Oldest daughter. Yes, ma'am. So... Do you think Mr. Cooper is your father's son, is your brother? Well, Your Honor, seriously, I really don't know. Okay. So, when you see your father's pain, how does that make you feel? It hurts because we've been through so much with our family and he missed out. I mean, if this happens to be Mr. Newby's son, there's a lot of things we missed out on together as a family, but I guess we just have to take it for what it is, and hopefully we can become a family and go on from this day. Build relationships from this point forward. That's all we can do. And so, if in fact Mr. Cooper is determined to be your father's biological son, your brother, is your family willing to accept him and open yes, to that? Yes, ma'am. All my kids are. All my kids are. Everybody. How does it feel to hear that, Mr. Cooper? Good. Good. Well, the only way we're going to move forward is to get the results, and I have them for you. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Cooper versus Newby, when it comes to 34-year-old Dante Cooper, 
It has been determined by this court. Mr. Newby, you are not the father. <clears throat> do you know who Mr. Cooper's father is? Who is it? What are you saying? Which would explain the family resemblance. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate for the sake of your son, you just being honest, because the secrets we keep inside, they affect us just as much, if not more, than the people we're trying to keep them from. Ms. McKeever, you say you have no doubt that Mr. Arnold is your three-year-old son, Kenneth's biological father. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, you've requested a paternity test and are suing Mr. Arnold for $1,796 in child care expenses. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Arnold, you and your aunt, Ms. Henderson, say that Ms. McKeever admitted to sleeping with two other men, but now you claim you're the one who's been put on child support for a boy who's definitely not yours. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. McKeever, he says he's on support. What does he actually do for your son? Well, actually, he has not done anything for my son. My sister has been playing a big role in my son's life far as buying him diapers, if I need money for to get my kids clothes. But he's it... on child support. Yes. But you've never gotten anything? I never got anything. Not a dime yet? Not a dime. And so you're suing for childcare expenses you've incurred thus far? Yes. Let me see those expenses, please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. These expenses include diapers, shoes, clothes. They total $1,796? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Arnold, are you doing anything for this child? No, it's not my child, so why would I pay anything? You feel confident it's not your child? Right. So you've chosen not to yes, sure. pay anything at all? Yes, sure. Even though you've been required to pay child support? Yes, sure, Honor. You know that's a dangerous game, right? It's not my child, so why should I pay anything? I put, I got put on child support because of not showing up to a, a DNA test. Oh, you were named a... I why didn't you show up to the DNA test, young man? Because I don't have any transportation to get to this place. But look, what, look where it ended up. This is... This happens in this courtroom way too much. Young men in your position, you come to court and you say, this is not my child, Your Honor, this is not my child, Your Honor. And then when I ask, did you have an opportunity to take a DNA test? Well, I couldn't get there. I didn't have no ride. I didn't have those... We get a ride to go everywhere else we want to go. <laughs> this is important because you see what happened. Once you didn't show, your name by default. You should not be in the position you're in right now. My other baby. And whether you are or you are not Kenneth's biological father today, because you didn't show up, they say, legally, you're deemed to be Kenneth's father. Now, she's saying her sister has had to step up to the plate and help cover all these expenses because she can't take care of the child. You not taking care of the child. I want to hear from your sister, ma'am. State your name, ma'am. I'm Shakiria Cox. Miss Cox, thank you for joining us today. So you've been stepping up to the plate as it relates to Kenneth. Yes, ma'am, I have. And you've been helping out. Yes, ma'am, I have. Paying for expenses. Haircuts, shoes, clothes, milk, anything that little boy needs. She, if she calls me, he have it, you know? With the understanding that... <laughs> with the understanding that she's responsible for paying you back this month. And, and that is... Yes. Everything is not being said. There was another young man involved who was supposed to be these kids' dad. Who is this now, young after man? after two years, now all of a sudden, my nephew is being blamed for these kids. Who, who These is, this is young not man? his children because if they was, why would you name another man saying that they was the dad? But all of a sudden you took it. I'm asking a question. Who is this young man? Do I, you know? I don't know him personally. Who is no, this I other don't. young man, Ms. McKeever? The other young man that I was with, he ended up going away. Okay. Mr. Arnold ended up moving with you me. Mean? So the whole time that he was living with me, Your Honor, you know, we were intimate a lot, unprotected. 
Now, the young, other young man that I was messing with, he ended up coming back home December 26th. So me and him, we messed around on that day. Around January 18th, I end up going to the doctor because I get my six-month checkup. The lady ended up telling me I was six weeks pregnant. The last person who I had intimate with was the other dude. And you submitted a calendar to the court? Yes. Pretty much you were with Mr. Arnold, having sex with him unprotected, you said? Yes. Pretty much the whole month of December. But when you got pregnant, your doctor told you that the window of conception was about the 24th of December? to the 31st, right? Yeah, yes. And you say you were intimate with the other guy... December 26th. December 26th, you were intimate with the other guy. Yes. So, you told the other guy that this is yes. his child. Mm. Yes. And you told Mr. Arnold he's not the father of the child. Yes, I did, Your Honor. So, Ms. Henderson, what would you like to add? I just wanted to make sure I understood that on my calendar. If her conception time was from December the 24th until the 31st, but all of a sudden she slept with this dude on the 26th, that's kind of convenient, don't you think? I mean, that's, that's two days. Okay, excuse me, Your that's Honor. That's real convenient. And then you decide that after this guy comes back, you are gonna tell him first that he the dad when you have been with Christopher all of December and you were with him one time, but he the dad. Not two years later, look where we at. This don't make no sense. So once she told you you were not the father, Mr. Arnold, what happened? The fake DNA test showed up then. She didn't block them out for two years. Blocked them off of Facebook, no contact. Two years later, this girl pop up and tell him she need to talk to him. When she gets him and talk to him, she tell him that she did the DNA for the other guy and I he not the daddy. DNA Christopher wanted a pro he wanted a copy of the DNA test. After two years, you finally did the DNA with the other guy. Explain. Okay, so as my son got older, when he started turning one into two his features start to come in. That little boy don't so, look nothing like us. So, the other guy that I was intimate with, he decided to get the DNA test. It was not my decision, it was his. So, he, they contacted me and they sent me a paper in the mail. I had a DNA test done. When I had a DNA test done and the DNA test came back, it said zero percent. But you so, what I did was... Do you have any evidence of that test? No, I don't have no, the evidence she don't. with me. And she wouldn't let us get a copy and she wouldn't let us take a picture of it so we could have some evidence. When you said Kenneth was one years old, you said you felt like he looked like Mr. Arnold. Yes. Did you As say he anything to Mr. Arnold then? Say, oh, this is... Yes, and when I said it to Mr. Arnold, these are Mr. Arnold's exact words. He said, I had a feeling that that's my child because every time I come around him, I have a connection. He always is that kept true, telling Mr. Arnold? Me that. Yes, Your Honor. I didn't know it was another guy in the involved until after she came back and showed me the papers. He's lying on that part. The time that we was in a relationship, he knew about the other guy. So it's not like I just got with Mr. Arnold and didn't tell him about this other guy. Even when the other guy got out, I told Mr. Arnold, well, I want to go see him. He didn't have nothing to say about that at all. So my thing is, if you felt that that little boy wasn't yours, why were you constantly contacting me? Why was you constantly asking me to be with you? Why would you constantly do that? You know what I'm saying? But and it, 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 ups, it, it, very, it upsets me because the simple fact is his family cannot sit here and tell him that this is not his child because y'all was not in the bedroom with us when we did what we did. And y'all was not living with me. Y'all wasn't calling him, asking him, did he need this, did he need that? It was no, always me sure that was doing You told it. another man exactly. he was the daddy. Exactly. We exactly. sure exactly. won't go and call the only daddy reason why, Let's get some the you only reason him. why. Order. The kid don't even look like me, so I don't understand why I'm being put through this. So, mister, okay, so you say he doesn't look like you. He don't. So, when he was one and she said he's starting to look like you and you said, yeah, I thought that was my son because we have a connection, did that happen? Yeah, sure, Honor, but... You did say that. Right, but... Exactly. He don't... Exactly, that's like, what I'm now. saying. That's let why him, I'm not let, understanding. Hold on, let, 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 let now, Mr. Arnold finish like the me. statement. Okay. He three now. He don't even look like me now. You don't feel like he looks at, like you at all? Mm-mm. 
And it's crazy, he can't even speak for himself. First of all, you are 27 years old. I mean, you can see you are a right. grown man. Why every time you have a problem or we have anything going down, you gotta run to your family member? Cause that's what we Why don't you step that's what up you and be a man and worry about your kids? Cause at the end of the you. day, at the end of the day, me and you are going to be taking care of those kids, not your family, not nobody else. That's you how I look that, at girl. it. You don't know so therefore, do. I'm not just bringing him to try to you plant a baby on him. Baby. Because like I said, when Mr. Arnold, when I met Mr. Arnold, he didn't have nowhere to stay. So you really think I'm just about to pick you out the sky and say, oh, I want him to be my baby daddy. No, that ain't me. I'm not about to do that. So for them to sit here and try to say, oh, she trying to make him take care of her kids or she trying to blame him. No, that is not even the fact because this is about me. I, I grew up in foster care, your honor. I grew up in foster care. I had no father at all. Period, at all. So I didn't want my son to grow up and not know who his father is. So it hurt me a lot for his family to sit up here and try to make me out as a bad person. Yes, I admit to my wrong. I was wrong for messing with two guys at the same time. I am wrong for that. Yep. But I'm here today to try to prove to him that that is his son, you know what I'm saying? And it hurt me because my son acts about him every day. He does. He acts about him every day and it hurt me that I can't even pick up the phone and be like, well, come get your son. Your son want to see you. Come on now. You, it's okay. You can say, it, it would be different if he said, it's a possibility that I'm not his father. But you just straight out saying, you just not his father. Like me and you never was had sex ever before. And that really hurt me. I broke down to Christopher and I apologized to him. I said, I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart for doing that to you because you missed out of two years of your son. So I feel bad for doing that. I take, I take my part of being a woman and admit to my faults of what I did. But for them to just flat out just say I'm lying, that really hurts me. Your Honor, can I so, please say yes, something? Yes, Ms. Henderson, what would you like to When you start out with lies, you end up with lies. You lay down with dogs, you get up with fleas. That really hurts me. And for him to just sit and there trying to make me like I'm a bad person and not even try to at least take up for me and say the wrongs that he did. Because the reason why me and him broke up and I end up paying attention and messing with the other man is because I found pictures on social media of him and another girl. My nephew is not a bad person. My nephew was just put in a situation where he was told one thing when she knew it was something else. And so well, with the, I mean, all that incurring, not so you much. Keep I never said he so was a bad person. Hold on, hold on, hold He's on. He's a good hold man. Hold on. I'm talking now. Okay. What would you like to add, Mr. Arnold? I can go to jail for a child that ain't even mine. I don't right. even know possibly I'm the father. Now, if you go to jail for failure to pay support, which is a possibility, all because a bus ride with somebody you slept with for the whole month of December, uh, for three weeks, Your Honor. and you could father a child, that doesn't make any sense. Because now you standing here with your life on the line. You, you, she said you haven't paid anything. You can get picked up any time. And all you had to do was show up. So now you're here. Even if it's determined that you're not this child's biological father today, that does not change the legal issue you're faced with is that you have been named this child's father by default for failure to show up. And so if you're not, you're gonna have to go to back to your home state, go to court, present this evidence, this DNA evidence, and then go from there and there's no guarantee. Do you understand this? Yes, Your Honor. Don't you ever let anybody control your fate, your life, and your destiny and you facing consequences that only you are responsible for alone. <laughs> I'm ready for the results. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. Is there something you wanted to say? If he's not ours, we don't want this problem. We, we don't need the aggravation. You don't want the problem. Did anybody he hear what I just said? That's what I'm saying. But this is the thing about Your it, Your aggravation? <laughs> yeah, this is a whole bunch of mess. No, my point is, he didn't show up to court. That's what aggravated <laughs> the situation. The failure to show up to court. Do you get that? 
Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Are we ready for the results? Yes. Mm -hmm. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics. They read as follows. In the case of McKeever versus Arnold, when it comes to three-year-old Kenneth James Reeves, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Arnold, you are his father. That's what we wanted. That's what we here for. The DNA, the truth. Your Honor, I will step up to the plate. I want to be around my all my kids. Good. All my kids. That's what I want to hear, young man. You're not a bad guy. You listening to the wrong people. Thanks. Your Honor, I never said that he was a bad guy because he's not. He's a really great person. He's not a bad father at all. You didn't. But I want him to understand that sometimes when you stand before court and you have to face your wrongs, talk about things that you should have done differently, that's a difficult thing to do. And you may feel like, self, you really blew it now, you know. Everybody thinks you irresponsible. Everybody thinks you this. Everybody thinks you that. At the end of the day, that really doesn't matter, Mr. Arnold. What matters is what your intentions are going forward. You understand that? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Ms. McKeever, you came to court suing for $1,796, yes, right? Honor. Yes. Because it has been determined, Mr. Arnold, that you are, in fact, Kenneth's biological father, Ms. McKeever is entitled to half of those expenses. For that reason, judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $898. Court is adjourned. <laughs> Mr. Cooper, you admit to a brief sexual fling with the defendant, but state there is no way you fathered her two-year-old son, Jaden. You opened your case because you claim Ms. Canterbury threatened to put you on child support and you want to prove you're not the father before she can do that. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Canterbury, you claim the conception dates for your son point to the plaintiff, and you hope today's results confirm that he is Jaden's father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Cooper, explain your child support concerns. Man, I'm going to tell you like this. Did you say man? No, I'm, say I'm sorry, Judge. <laughs> judge, I'm going to tell you like this, Judge. I watch people come in here all the time and some people be good men and get criticized and then they be sitting here, then all they want is just the money from them and it ain't gonna be me today. And you're convinced that Jaden's not your biological <clears throat> child? She know that baby ain't mine. That's like she just called me last night talking about some, would you be mad if he wasn't yours? Oh. What? Oh, that's a lie, though. That's a lie. I never said any of that. Okay, let <laughs> me try to translate this. <laughs> When you were on the phone, she was trying to give you the one-up that it may not be yours. This one-up that she should have gave me from the day he was born. Not now. So take me back. Before we get to that point, how did you all even meet? It was just, we were out. She was with her people. I was with mine. It's like we just linked. I seen her some years later. She already got a reputation for being loose. Ooh. Come on now, ain't nobody got time for this. Okay. But you didn't even know me, though, so how would you know Right. That? I know you. You don't know me. Okay. So, wait you're a minute. What you're around. saying is, is you had mutual friends. That's how you met? Yes. And then it turned into a sexual relationship between the two of you. Y yes. But we only, we only had sex, like, three or four times together. That's it. And he told me while we were having sex that he wanted me to have his baby. Uh, I'm gonna stop you right there. Your Honor, she's a lie. <laughs> I never said that. But you did. He did. He said that. I ain't say that. What did you say? I see it. <laughs> I'm enjoying this moment right now in so many words. <laughs> That's all I said, Your Honor. Ms. Lake, I didn't say nothing about no baby, have my baby, no none of yes, that. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. That's a lie. That's a lie. He did. So wait, well, well were I, you just... got me confused with somebody else. Did you say it in the heat no. of the moment, Mr. Cooper? You know, we hear that sometimes in the courtroom. Things just come out your mouth. In the heat of the moment. Even in the heat of the moment, that's one thing I would never let slip out my mouth. 
Because that's something you don't say to a woman. Okay. They don't take that too kindly, especially if you got plans on... Oh, they take it kindly, all right. Yeah, they don't take... They, they, and then you... They follow through. Yes. That's why you don't say that. Okay. You get yourself stuck in something you don't want to be in. Not so, me. take me, Miss Canterbury, to the moment you find out you're pregnant. Okay, so, I, uh, missed my period for a whole month. So, me and my mom took a test together and it turned out I was pregnant. Okay. So, I had messaged Anthony and told him and he blocked me on Facebook. Oh, so you oh, did no. send a message? Yes, I oh, did. no, yes, she... I told him. She ain't never been started. Let me... She so ain't hold never on, been blocked hold on, on my Facebook. Hold on. How did you find out Miss Canterbury was pregnant? Your Honor, I was on social media. I'm scrolling. I see she printed. She took a picture. I liked it. Did. She didn't say nothing. Oh, okay. I liked it, the picture. Didn't say nothing to me. This is the picture in the monitor you saw? Yeah, that's one of the pictures. I liked it a couple of them. She didn't say nothing to me. But when did you hear that you could potentially be Jaden's biological well, Jayden, father? Born. When I found I get out a call, I was pregnant. I get, hold on, I'm talking. I get a call. And you keep I'm talking. at the house. And you keep talking. I'm at the house. I get a call. My mama called me. Some girl here with a baby. <laughs> huh? And I'm still a baby. What you mean, baby? That's how I felt. But I'm like, man, you got me messed up. I ain't got no kids. And that is the first time you've ever heard about Jaden. Your mom calls you and say, it's a girl over here with a baby. Man, get over here. I come over there, she gone, the baby laid in my mama's arm. My mama got attached to the baby. And just that quick? Just that quick. Now I'm in but... a hard... Now I'm in a hard spot stuck under a rock because my family done got attached to this baby. I don't know. I just can't drag him out their life like that. He's already in it. Wait, he just got dropped off. Right. <laughs> My point exactly. That's how quick she fell in love with the baby. She told she Miss Canterbury to leave the baby there with her. She knew from the start that he was Jaden's. She said that Jaden looked how like... How old was Jaden when you left the baby with his mom? Uh, he was probably that, like a month old. Man, that... Yes, right. Exactly. A month old. Exactly. But now he's two years old. Yeah, almost About three. About to be three. Almost three, yep. <laughs> May I speak, Your Honor? Please. Yes. I have something to say. <laughs> you know this baby was my baby. Or you claim it to be my baby. If you had a baby and you thought a man was your potential baby father, wouldn't you let him know whether he is or he not? You would and say something and you would and let him know oh, it's a potential you could be. You would say that, right? Of course, but you I just wouldn't not have, have a potential. nobody stuck in the dark, living a lie. You're not gonna do that. She admitted to it. Man, she admitted to being with other dudes. Everything. When I met her, she was already was messing with other, other people when I first met her. You I know said what I'm there saying? was another person. The yeah. first, I got man, this, and then she's trying to say the baby mind, the time don't need the timeline don't even add up. It does. It don't add up. It does. So Mr. Cooper. <laughs> yes. You submitted a calendar to the court. I would like to have you come step up to the monitor and explain this exhibit you've brought. Yes, Your Honor. You see right here? Yes. In the week of September, this is the first time we had sex. I wore a condom. Nope. Second time we had sex was this week, through the 28th. And I remember it. It was threesome. We was all drunk. You are... You are definitely alive. How are you so sure you wore the condom? Judge, I woke up with it on. <laughs> oh! He I woke up with talking. it on. It was on me. And the second time we had sex it was wasn't on me. until after Jaden was born. Okay. Uh, so it was going you sound on. dumb. It was you on. Sound me. dumb. Okay. But can I kind of finish talking? I'll let you talk, please. You've been talking the this third whole time. time the you third time bash me. we had sex, I didn't wear a condom. And so you say this whole timeline doesn't lead <laughs> to what ultimately is determined to be the window of conception. My point exactly. All right, so let's figure that out. You may step back to the plaintiff's podium and let me do my own calculation. <laughs> let me get the um... conception calculator here and let's go to work. All right, so let's start with when was Jaden born? May 27, 2016. May 27, 2000 what? 16. 16. Jaden was born. Let me get that date in. Got it. If we hit calculate, 
The conception window would have been between September 2nd and September 6th, and the most probable time of sex would be between August 30th and September 6th. Judge, so, I told so let's go back to your calendar, saying. Mr. Cooper. It's off. You just explained it. I couldn't say no. And better. you claimed during that particular sexual encounter, you wore a condom. I sure did the first two times. Nope. Not the third we time. Didn't not have, October. We didn't have I sex didn't. I'm not gonna lie. The same year. I, had a few, I had a few drinks. You got caught slipping. Oh, more than I, a few. I, I was more than slipping. I was falling. <laughs> I don't know what to say, Judge. All right, so you're saying that in your calculation, you were not having sex with Miss Canterbury during the window of conception. Right. But you disagree, Miss Canterbury. Yep, I do. First of all, we didn't have uh, sex three times in the same year. We had sex one time in 2015. The other two times were after Jaden was born. He was trying to get me pregnant. He y said... Your Honor, no, I Hold wasn't. on. The first time you ever had sex, he says, I want to get you pregnant? Yes, yes. Oh, not today. Yes. You ain't gonna do this, not today. She's lying. Wait, what did he, he looked, say, um, Miss... Stop. What did he say, Miss Canterbury? He said, I want you to have my baby. That's what he said. And I don't, I don't want to, you know, really Look say this, but tell me, he slept with me, me all that. night, so... Look at me, my... I, w I slept with her all night. I was there. We, no. We have sex all night. In me, like... I never told her I wanted so... to have my baby. I never said You're that. a lie. It never You're came out my mouth now once. Never. I wouldn't even think about it. And which it. month was this, Miss Canterbury? August. Oh, okay. Now, I'm gonna say this one time. Can I say something, Judge, please? You... But August was not on your exhibit, Mr. Cooper, so... Right. Because he don't know what he's talking about. He I... just looks dumb. He don't know I... what he's talking Ooh, about. I do know what I'm talking about. You don't. You don't. And why... Why could it not be August, Mr. Cooper? Jaden was made in August. I ain't touched back down to Toledo to September. Do the math, add it up. We just did it. You okay. Can you can say what you want, but I don't care. I really know the truth. So, All these people don't know the truth, but I know Ms. the truth. Miss Canterbury, I need to ask you. So obviously, Mr. Cooper has not been stepping up. Nope, not at all. Doing anything for nope. Jaden? Nope, nothing. Who's been Jaden's father? My figure? boyfriend, Casey. So your boyfriend has yes. had to step up and be a father figure to Jaden. Yes, he's. We've been together. We've been together since before Jaden was one years old. So he's been here. He's taken care of him financially. He's been here, taught him things. He's been the only father figure in his life. They're very close. Now, Your Honor, may I say something? Now, I just sat here and told you my mama got attached to that baby, right? I just said that, right? So you think I'm going to disappoint my mama even though I feel that doubt? I'm not about to have my mama look at me because she ain't raised that type of man. Whether I do or I don't know, that's why we're here to find out the day which I need to find out. Because you say your mother has just decided it's our baby. Yeah. My mama put the roll on me. Look at that. Y'all see that? They look just alike. Look yeah, at that nose. Look, look at that so... nose. Look at that forehead. Look yeah, at those eyebrows. About, about my... Looks are deceiving. No. I'm pretty sure you see looks are deceiving every day in this court, Judge. <laughs> they are deceiving. Don't let nothing fool you. I he's, don't know if That's you are the is. father or not, but you are definitely theatrical. You are a thespian. Thank you, Your Honor. At the end of the day, we are not in the theater. We are in the courtroom. Exactly. I hear And that's argue. because a baby, up. no, a baby's life is really at stake here because he's two. He ain't asked to be And here. he did not. And he's a beautiful and he's little boy. You. And he should know who his mm -hmm. biological father is. Right. He deserves yep. to know that. What are your hopes, Mr. Cooper? You say your mother is so attached to Jaden. What are you hoping for today? Your Honor, I came here to prove that I wasn't a father. That you were not. Yes, I'm not. But then as I sit here and say that, if that cuss come back that I'm not that father, that's gonna break their hearts at home. Because they got so attached to him. Mm -hmm. How about you, Ms. Canterbury? What's your hope today? Um, I just hope that, you know, the test results prove that he's the father and that he could step up, be a man, be the father that he should be. And what if he's not Jaden's biological father? He's still... He's fine without... He's fine without it. He got Casey, he got me. He don't need... He don't need anybody else. 
Do you know where the other potential father is? Yes. And he's... he's oh, he but... Ain't, I, I, he ain't nothing either. Uh, oh! I already oh, said it. Up. I already said oh. it. But you, you don't, ain't, can't nobody hear me because you keep talking. Oh, they, we all just heard you. I'm pretty sure everybody heard that in this room. Yes, and I said Judge, it was that? somebody else. I always hear. That's what I'm sitting on That's this bench to do. That. Because she already knows what I said. Yes, there was somebody else, like I said, and I know where he's at, but he's just like Anthony. He ain't Go he ain't find him. him. Mm, this is something right. that should have came out from day one. Okay, you could be quiet because yeah, you look really right. dumb. Listen, yeah, listen, right. listen. We have the truth. Now we know there is another possible father. Let's get the results. Jerome, I'm ready for it. Thank you. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Cooper versus Canterbury, when it comes to two-year-old Jaden Canterbury, it has been determined by this court Mr. Cooper, you are the father. Like I said, like I said, like I said. Yeah. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. You are the father. Thank you, Your Honor, for those results. <laughs> I will leave you alone. I will no, do everything you, won't, you want me to do. Because you got a, a two-year-old, a three-year-old to take care of. I'll do everything you need me to do. I got you. Now okay, I will contact you okay. myself. I won't go to nobody else. Listen, right. Othello. <laughs> Listen. Your new name is Othello. <laughs> you have performed up in here. But I have to honestly say, even though you about crazy, Mr. Cooper, <laughs> um, <laughs> I think you'd be a good dad. I really do. I really do. Thank you, Your Honor. And I think that you want to be. It is time for you to step up and let it be known for Jaden, who his dad is, that you care about his well-being. Yes, ma'am. Are you prepared to do that? I've been prepared since 1994. <laughs> what happened in 1994? The day I came out my mama, I was great. 